Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic here. I'm back with my good friend Christy from Proper Modern Home. We're up here at her new house getting built. She's not only the general contractor, part of the general contracting team, Kurt, her husband is also part of that team. And uh, this is their house. And if you remember last week, we talked about the concrete slab and the desire to have that concrete slab. You did a great job, um, Christy, by the way. But you're up in Maine. We're building a passive house inspired house. One of the big things is thermal brakes and energy, right? That we pay for. So right. you guys worked up a nice little detail here that if you wanted to tell us a little bit about it. Sure, sure. So um, as Steve mentioned, we're gonna be pouring the floor here um, within the next week or so. And the floor is actually gonna run into this piece of rigid insulation so that we get a nice thermal break across the whole bottom of the of the floor um, before we put the lift and slide we've got a 10 foot lift and slide coming into the space uh, it's a shuko lift and slide triple pane absolutely beautiful stunning it's it's really a piece of art if you think about it and it's just an absolutely beautiful feature for the home um, but it's really important not to just detail that triple pane window but also to get the the thermal break correct, and then obviously to seal that door up really well um, to get the air tightness that we're looking for as well. Yeah, and I commend you guys on this because a lot of times I just, you know, if, if you're, I, I say average builder, but I don't want to condemn them, but some builders would choose not to put this, just use these this mud sill as the end dam and just simply pour to that, call it a day, and then install the door over that. But you're concerned to complement the triple glazed windows, the double stud wall, all of that stuff, that we gotta seek out solutions like using two inches of rigid insulation as the end dam to that system. And if you notice, um, and, and I know you did, but I'm saying for the listeners, that it contours all around. So the slab is totally encapsulated in rigid insulation, except for the parts that are exposed to the conditioned basement or the conditioned room above. So you guys, uh, proper modern home, doing it right up here in Maine. Christine and Kirk, look for them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio here. Steve Basic Architect, and we were just out there with Christy walking around looking at that slab edge insulation. Well, I inked out the detail from the set of drawings. I got big red here. Let's dive in, let's make it happen. So let's take a look at it. All right, everybody. So grab this detail out of the drawing set. Give me a little orientation here. So this is the foundation wall. There you can see it has a little seat component to it. And the reason for that seat component is, is to grab the edge of that fluted deck system. That we have there, you can see it going across there. Um, so we have two inches of rigid insulation that rides up the inside wall. It actually comes across that seat and it appears there, I'll color that in for you. You can see it nice and clear. That's that two inches of insulation that we saw from the top when we were peering down at it. So the reason is, is we wanted to pull this slab over enough so that we had something to seat our interior two by four wall. It's our two by four wall and it's non load bearing. So it basically just provides containment for our 11 inch assembly there that will fill with um, R42 cellulose. And we have the exterior bearing wall here, which is a two by six, and that sits on top of that upper portion of the foundation. So the thing that we're really concerned about is, is this foundation touches the outside. And we didn't want this to touch the inside. So we need to put some type of insulation on it. So we have the two inches of 
rigid insulation that runs on there and then we'll frame out a two by four wall and do an unfaced bad insulation so that we're going to get somewhere around the R26 for our below grade. But the important piece of this that I wanted to point out is this perimeter piece of insulation out at the edge there that we have two inches. It's roughly about R13 and it runs up there. Now it looks like this corrugated decking is about to crush that insulation or is being supported by that, but it isn't. Remember last week when we talked about it, there's a steel beam under here. There's one in the background and there's one in the foreground. So this slab is actually working as a one-way beam in between the two steel beams. And so it's acting like a bridge. So it's not crushing this, it's actually just supported above that by the beam in the foreground and the beam in the background. So that it has the ability to be suspended over our thermally broken um, insulation package here and have that perimeter insulation. So we push the foundation wall outside here and we keep the slab inside here. And the demising point is that two inches of perimeter insulation that isolates that interior slab from the outside foundation here. So that we do have some heat loss there, obviously. You have heat loss everywhere, but we've combated that with at least a solid, you know, R13 thermal break where we're not touching and have that direct heat loss there. So, and then this aligns quite nicely with our 11 inch wall. That's a two by four and a two by six and has that two inch airspace that aligns very nicely with that perimeter insulation below. So we get that nice break and you know what I'm going to say, we maintain continuity of our rigid insulation as it moves through the building there. So everything aligns, it works well together, it's playing nice, it makes sense, easy to construct even though the detail does have this illusionary effect in that it looks like that slab is going to crush this. And oh by the way, these flutes, they actually have a purpose beyond say reducing the amount of concrete. They actually run through there as this corrugated flooring and it's those corrugations that actually build the strength so that it doesn't sag here that it maintains its integrity as a straight form in between those beams on the, I believe they're about six foot five on center. So anyways, there you have it. Perimeter slab insulation, isolated slab, it's inside. Foundation wall, we push to the outside. We've uh, maintained all of our rules of thermal continuity. So, hope you enjoyed that. All right, Big Red, time to go to bed. Anyways, go check it out. If you're looking for more, Build Show Network. Literally thousands of videos there. Check them out. My colleague's doing some great work. Um, I have a whole bunch of videos, a couple years worth. All kinds of exciting stuff to go watch. Watch it seven times. And uh, hey, that's what the science says. Just go and buy it. Um, if you're looking for more from me, Steve Basic Architect. I'm on Instagram putting up stuff, you know, daily, a couple posts a day sometimes. So go check it out. we got a lot of exciting stuff happening, and uh, I'm willing to share it with you. So go check it out. And then lastly... My good friends, Peter and uh, Jake, the three of us host the Unbuild It podcast. Yeah, you can go check that out and uh, listen to us uh, chat it up as well as you get to see all the fun stuff that we're doing behind the scenes because it's live on video on YouTube. So go check it out. Until next time, long live our buildings.